Namaste, welcome to today's practice where the focus is using the wall to help us move into halasan or plow pose. I like doing it um, because it brings attention or focus to creating that digestive fire because of the compression and also brings length and that the sensation of lengthening or pulling of the spine. The other thing that I like about plow pose is that it allows me or invites me to move, to return internally, return inward through and also using my five senses. So instead of projecting or looking outward with the five senses, is to look inward and yes as we approach winter we want to keep those digestive fires moving burning otherwise the system becomes lethargic and um, that also can affect our overall mental and emotional well-being so what you would need is a wall and if you have any props that will support you, then by all means, bring, bring them along with you. So let's start out in child's pose. So bringing either the knees closer, further away, arms by the side of the body, if you need a block to rest the forehead on. And you take that block, place it underneath the forehead. or you can remove the block, arms by the side, or you can extend them in front. Or sometimes make a pillow of your hands and support the forehead. And just spend a few breaths here. reminding or just inviting us to take our gaze inward. And when you take that gaze inward, it's more or less to see how that self, our inner self, is feeling. Then invite the breath to be steady, long, especially on the exhale. So we create more space for the in-breath to fill the belly, the lungs. And then extend the arms out, take both your arms to the right side, press on the left palm on top of the right. You can open up the knees a little bit to allow the chest to sink in between the thighs and then feel that extension happening on the left side. So breathe nice and deep into the left side of the lungs. The left side of the lung is smaller than the right because of the position of the heart.
And then slowly you take the arms to the other side. Right hand on top of the left. Notice the extension on the right side and breathe into the right ribs, the lungs. And then taking the arms back to the center. You're going to lift the hips, bring the knees a little closer towards each other, and then lower the chest to the floor into Anahata, the melting heart. And then from here you'll slide forward. Make a pillow of your hands, resting the forehead to the back of your hands. And on an inhale, lift that right leg. Keeping the left leg relaxed. And then you'll take small circles here with that right leg. And then opposite direction. And then take it up to the side and back to the center. Two more rounds. And hold it here. Now bend that right knee, flex the foot. And you're going to gently lift that right knee up and lower. And when you lift, you want to engage and squeeze through that right glute. Hold it there, squeeze. And breathe. Move the hips to either side. And then we'll bring the attention to the left leg. So inhale, lift the left. Keeping my right leg or your right leg relaxed here. Engage through the belly. You never want to relax the belly completely. So you still want to engage your mula bandha. And then take those circles. Opposite direction. And then out to the side and center. Inhale, extend the leg out. Exhale, bring the leg back in. And then bend that left knee, flex the ankle. Inhale, lift. And then lift and hold and engage through the glute. And exhale, release. Moving the hips from side to side. And then you'll bend both the knees, flex at the ankle, inhale, lift the knees, engage through the glutes here. Draw the navel in. And exhale, release. Again, moving the hips. 
Moving on to that right leg, lift the right leg, bend that knee, flex the ankle here. Now I'm engaging through my left side as I press the left toes into the ground. Lift that left knee a little higher if you can. And then exhale, extend the leg out. Inhale, bend. So you can keep the toe pointed or flexed. Exhale. Straighten that leg. Inhale. Two more. And release. I could feel that in my hip. Don't know about you, but I did. I'm sure you did. <laughs> anyway, on to the other side. I'm pressing firmly through my right leg, flexing through my left ankle, inhale, lifting that knee. Exhale, extend. And hold it there. And release. Taking the arms by the side of the body, palms face down, fingers point in the direction of your toes. Inhale, imagine, so before you come up, imagine that marble beneath the nose and you're pushing that marble away from you when you inhale. Gently apply pressure with the fingertips and the palms onto the ground. Take the gaze to the short end of the mat. Draw or engage to the navel. Press the hips, thighs towards the floor. Exhale, lower. Two more rounds. Inhale. And exhale. One last round. And hold it here. Engage to the glutes, working the muscle in the spine. And exhale. Move the hips. Press the hands into the floor. Tap that chin in towards the throat. Draw the navel in. Inhale, lift up. And release it into child's pose. And then back, transitioning through tabletop, lower the thighs, the belly, and then moving into Bhujangasana here. Draw the navel in, press the hands into the floor, lifting, moving into child's balasana. Inhale, round into the back, lower the thighs, the navel, lift the chest, bend at the elbows. Shoulders roll down. One more time. And as you can see, the width of this room is the correct size for my body. I don't think, if I was any taller, I don't think I would be able to do this. And one last time. Shoulders roll down, elbows bent, hugging a little closer towards you. Play around with the arms, the position of the hands. They don't have to be exactly where I have them or you have them. Sometimes I like to play around, take it a little forward and hold it here. If you find that you're feeling something in the lower back, engage through the glutes here. Take the legs wider. And exhale, release. 
to move the hips. And then you'll take the arms behind you, interlace the fingers. Bring the legs a little closer. And then draw the shoulder blades towards each other. Inhale, lift the chest. Breathing here. One more breath. And exhale, release. Take the gaze to your left. Notice the beating of the heart. Know that you are alive just by feeling that heartbeat. We go up for one more round. Interlace the fingers. If you um, can't do the fingers, you can also take a strap or a block holding on here and then inhale lifting up two more breaths and exhale release take the gaze to the right here, draw the navel in, press the hands, lift up into child's pose. And then tuck the chin and roll up. Now moving into plow, we're going to use the wall here. I am going to work my way down so that when I do bring my feet or my legs over my head, my feet can touch or press the wall, okay? So I explore a little. Very important to keep the head in the center. You can soften in the knees, support the lower back. Or you can straighten the legs. And if you want, you can also take the legs a little wider. And then from here, you can extend the right leg up. Walk the shoulder blades a little closer. And then changing sides. Again, bending at the knees, or straightening the legs. And then if you want to move into shoulder stun, bring the shoulder blades again closer, extend the right leg up. Slowly bend at the knees, 
and to plow. Release the arms down, draw the navel in, soft bending the knees as you slowly roll down. Controlled movements, engaging through the core. Once the spine and the sacrum has touched the ground, then slowly bend at the knees, feet to the ground. Pause there for a moment. And then press the elbows into the ground. You can also bring the feet into the butterfly. I don't have any more space for my legs to stretch out. So this is the position I'm going to take to release the pressure and tension in my neck. Elbows pressed, and then I'm going to lift the chest, and then drop the head back. Into fish pose. Lift the chest, and then bring the chin back, and slowly lower down. And then you'll come into your Shavasana, extending the legs out or keeping the feet in the butterfly, your choice. You can stay as long as you need to. I like to always reinforce Shavasana as the most important position, posture, um, of your whole practice. So stay as long as you need to. Gently allow the breath to be simple in nature. Bringing my hands together, fingertips to the forehead. And breathing in, breathe out. Hari Om. That's it. Namaste, thank you.